Now that we have a basic understanding of how to develop pivot tables in Microsoft Excel, let's talk about visualizing things using pivot charts. Pivot charts are simply just pivot tables, but visualized. But they are more than a mere chart. In other words, the types of charts that you may have built using Microsoft Excel before uh, don't have some of the more advanced customization, exploration, and dynamic adjustment features that pivot charts have available to them. With that said, Pivot charts are very powerful tools, but just because you can do something making it in a pivot chart doesn't mean you should. One of the lessons that we're going to get from this brief tutorial is that pivot charts can be dangerous tools when they're used in the wrong hands without proper consideration. In other words, let's make sure that we know what we're intending to do rather than just accepting that the pivot chart is magically working. So let's lay out our pivot chart game plan for this video. We're going to work from the same pivot table that we already built in a previous video tutorial, where we had measures about people's attendance to craft beer tasting, and we had their opinions related to whether or not they liked very hoppy beers. We're going to start from this completed pivot table in this tutorial. With the table selected, we'll merely switch over and activate the pivot chart feature. And since all of the comparisons that we want to do are is comparing percentages across the different groups. A stacked column chart where each of the groups, in our case the groups being tasting room behavior, will be an excellent choice. So we select that option available from the menu. Okay, so we have our pivot table that we built from a previous video tutorial. Now we simply want to convert this into a pivot chart. So just select it anywhere in our pivot table, switch to analyze, pivot chart, and we're going to want to build a column chart here, and we want to build a stacked column chart. And there we go. But uh-oh, something is wrong. This is not exactly how we want to see the data. In fact, it's completely not showing the analysis that we're interested in. Let's figure out why and then figure out a game plan to fix this issue. Now by default, this is not what we wanted. Notice that now our stacked bars, each adding up to 100%, are actually, this, are actually grouped by answers to the hoppy beer question, and the colors within each bar are representing people's behavior towards craft beer tasting. This is not at all what we wanted. The results here, for example, are telling us Amongst those people who strongly disagree about hoppy beer, 40% of them are not interested and never have gone craft beer to a craft beer tasting room. And about 34% here have been to a craft beer tasting room. So notice that the base has totally switched. We're going to need to flip this. The solution will be easy enough. We're merely going to swap the axis in legend in our pivot table or pivot chart now menu. Then right click on the table and instead of showing column percent total as we were previously from the previous example, we'll swap it so it's showing percent of row total. Fortunately, the solution is pretty easy. We just swap our two here and then we right click in our table and instead of showing values as percent of column total, we show as percent of row total. Oh, and unlike I showed in the previous slides, I accidentally left the 999, meaning the people who didn't respond to this question of in terms of whether or not they had engaged in craft beer tasting. But that's easy enough to fix. Simply just go to the row labels now and deselect that option. There we go. We're right back on track. Now this is actually showing the analysis we want, but we're gonna to wanna to clean this thing up. So it's correct, but maybe not quite as beautiful as we'd like it to be for presentation. This version of the chart is what we're gonna be aiming for in our final formation. Notice some key important differences. First, we decided to depict the percentages, but only for selected components of each one of the bars. Since our analysis is focused on who does agree that they like hoppy beers, we, cho we chose to only show the percentages for those who agree or strongly agree for each of the three groups. In addition, we're using color, the color green in different shades, contrasted against gray, to draw our viewers' attention to the particular 
type of response that we're most interested in for this analysis. In addition, we also sorted the answers in a slightly more productive way. We swapped the I don't know answers from the top of the bars and all the way to the bottom so that the viewer can always default to their most easy way of analyzing types of bar charts where high is good, if you will. We also added a title and we hid the menu bars that we had in the original. They're no longer visible here, which makes them appropriate to include in a report or a presentation. From here, Let's talk about how we're going to improve this data visualization so that not only is it right, but it's appropriate for a presentation to an audience. To clean this up, it's going to take a lot of different formatting. What I'm going to do is I'm going to accelerate the video and have notes along the bottom that note how I'm doing these different tasks when while I'm highlighting those issues. If you're having difficulty, just pause and follow along and follow the steps as we do. And there we go. Of course, we could tweak the colors, sizing of the font, and continue to slightly adjust the pivot uh, chart as we best see fit for our audience or presentation. But this is really close to all the way there and definitely much better than where we started. Basic written reporting of this type of pivot chart might look something like the following. As seen in figure blank, respondents who had attended a craft beer tasting were more likely to say they preferred really hoppy beers, a two box score of 44.58%. It is notable that those who had yet to attend a craft beer tasting but expressed interest in doing so were also a bit more likely to prefer really hoppy beers, two box score of 21.85%. Although not shown in figure blank, it should be noted that most survey respondents had not actually attended a craft beer tasting. Notice how this reporting summarizes the key results that we see in the visual, does so in a way that's slightly different than what the visual shows to draw additional insights using two box scores. In addition, it uses this final sentence in a very important way. One of the things missing from this stacked bar chart is it doesn't show us what percent of individuals belong to each of these three categories. It's probably important to notice that 64% of all the respondents had not gone to craft beer tasting, belonging to either this bar or that bar. Clearly, a craft beer marketer would want to know that those people who have been craft beer tasting only represent slightly over one third of the entire data set. Now, in this brief video, we just scratched the surface of using pivot charts in Excel. Pivot charts and pivot tables are extremely powerful, but they're not your only option. Almost any chart that you might want to make using a pivot table in Excel could also be made just using the regular chart tools in Excel. In most cases, you just have to, have to first calculate the summary statistics you want to report yourself by hand, then build the table or chart using the more standard chart building tools. Uh, pivot tables have an enormous amount of functionality, far beyond any one brief introduction. The best way to get up to speed and gain some skill with pivot tables and charts is simply to play. Walk through some additional guided tutorials that you might find on YouTube or find on websites, and then just start playing. What happens if you switch a setting? For Excel spreadsheets where you know you're not reporting it to a business client, you're not gonna hurt anything by breaking something. 
Go ahead and toggle some menus, right click, adjust, see what happens. Finally, don't hesitate to Google with purpose. There are a whole bunch of people who use Microsoft Excel and a whole bunch of people who need help with pivot tables and pivot charts. So exact Google phrases such as Excel pivot table reporting the average value of multiple variables. That level of precision, precision will in fact provide you with tutorials to help solve some problems. So don't be hesitant to Google with purpose. Finally, for those of you who are learning with new tutorials, or maybe you've been familiar with pivot tables or charts in the past, there's often a variety of different ways to accomplish the same outcome in terms of building pivot tables or charts in Excel. Obviously, I only showed one of the different ways as we move through the tutorials. You may learn new ways or tactics or tricks that you prefer yourself, and that's great. 